the afterlife of a few luminous paintings. Uh, the details, of course, were from his land, background landscapes has quietly haunted my imagination, persisting in eluding any interpretive grasp, and I often wondered why. Training and intellectual habit do sometimes get in the way, so perhaps a change of focus was what I needed to explore their hold on me, on why I could not, even deliberately did not want to, write about them for a very long time. But first, let's just look at this rather strange painting, near Sharon Crossing the River Styx, executed somewhere between 1520 and 1524, the year of his death. Patnier is a mysterious, almost forgotten artist to whom not much attention had been paid until a 2007 Prado show. A few fragments of Patnier's biography are that he was born in what is now Belgium and spent his career in Antwerp where he became a master painter in 1515 and, and where Durer uh, visited him in 1520-21. to 21. The goal of the Prado exhibition, according to its chief curator, and I'm quoting him here, was to understand his achievement as an artist by analyzing his biography, the meaning of his paintings, and the artistic, cultural, and economic context in which he produced his works. Context, that's a problematic word. It's a standard, if predictable, art historical protocol. But is that the only route for understanding his, quote, achievement as an artist? Patineer participated to some degree in the making of 29 paintings, only 12 of which evince a sustained quality, according to the connoisseurs in Spain, and this painting is one of them. The rest are claimed to be collaborations from his workshop, many of which enjoyed immediate market success. Credited as the inventor of world landscape paintings, his vistas are enchantingly panoramic, chock full of charming iconographic detail. This is Patineer's late vision of paradise and purgatory, in which a broad glassy river, by dividing the land of the blessed from that of the soon to be damned, flows to the rim of the known world. At its center, a, a gigantic Sharon, the ferryman of Hades, crosses the river Styx, transporting a poor lost soul whose fixed gaze falls upon the easy, little does he know, passage ahead. The shore where they're headed at first beckons with its lush meadows, flowering orchards, and fluttering birds. Now the poor soul might have chosen his path between good and evil differently, but now at the moment of his death, all is lost. The watery channel flowing under the darkening clouds winds through sinister shadows until it emerges at the fiery gates of Hades with the hideous three-headed Cerberus waiting to welcome its next pale victim. Whoops. <laughs> 